What size of pellet to use? That is the biggest question, especially at the start of a session. And this time of year on commercials for me, there's a time and a place for two mils, four mils and six mils. And I fish them all a little bit different and they can have a different effect on your swim and what you actually catch. Now, my crows or two mils for me, uh, the ultimate getting fish in your peg caught kind of bait. They're small, they're attractive and I always soak them so they're soft throughout. These are the two mil activated ones. I like activated pellets for all my summer spring style fishing. It's got like a meaty whiff to it. And I just think in that water warming up time period, anything a bit meaty um, has got to be good for catching fish. So always the activated ones for all the pellets that I use. Now I just soak these for five or six minutes in a strainer in the morning, did them in my garage this morning and then take them out, whack them in a tub, and within an hour, they're absolutely perfect. Soft throughout, you could squeeze them into a little ball or around a feeder if you want, but they break down and they are still individual pellets. Now, my crows, for me, are perfect for kicking your swim off. Fish love them, loads of tiny attractive particles in the swim, and once they get on them, they actually stay for a long time because there's lots of little particles for them to pick up. So, kicking off the swim, likely to be micro pellets, but then I will be very happy and willing to change to other sizes and kinds of pellet. And anything above a micro, four mils and six mils, what I've got with me today, um, I like to use in the hard form. And the reason is if I'm fishing with bigger pellets, it's because I'm fishing for A, bigger fish, and B, fish on the bottom where I want them pinned down. And a hard pellet sinks quickly. You can group them nicely out your pot, um, and a hard pellet on hook straightens all your rig out so it's nice and direct. For four mils for me, come in when I'm fishing for smaller carp, an odd F1 or an odd big skimmer still mixed in, um, and then I will step up to six mils if I want to either increase the size of the fish that I'm catching or if I'm having problems with foul lookers and liners. Now, what I would say, and this is probably the most important part of this discussion, is got to be willing to change between the sizes throughout a session and I think not enough people do that. Micras, like I've mentioned, are great for getting fish in your peg. So if you've got them in your peg but then you start to foul up a few, maybe switch to potting some fours in. And the difference is if you feed a pot of micro pellets, you might have 400 pellets in a medium sized pole pot. If you feed the same size pole pot of four mils, you might only have 50 or 60 pellets. So fish can clear them out and eat them a lot quicker. There's not as many particles to keep them there. By the same token, if you change that to six mil pellets, that same volume, you've got even less, probably 25, 30 pellets. So again, fish will eat them a lot, lot quicker. So you end up with that clean bottom, which makes catching the fish very, very easy. Now, I'm gonna start on my crust today and take it from there. But the nice thing here is, we'll be able to see this swim develop and hopefully make a few changes as we go along with the session. So kicking off, I'm going to keep it really simple. I've got a four mil neutral expander on there. I really like the neutral ones. If I want to flavour them, I actually do my own. Sometimes use a yellow one in really coloured water or red with a Captivate dies, but pretty plain today. And I'm going to start with micros. I've got a small Guru pole pot on there that I've adapted slightly just by cutting the holes a bit bigger in the bottom, filled it level with a two mils because they're really attractive and I'm hoping it's gonna get me some fish in the peg nice and quick. And the beauty of that four mil to start with, I could catch anything, skimmers, F1s, carp. And one thing I'd say about this kind of fishing is and I'm going to stress it throughout this film, you've got to be accurate. When you're potting in pellets like this, there's no point potting them in and then fishing, you know, six, eight, ten inches out of the way. So I've potted them in just there, and I'm going to lay my rig right on top of them. I've got a little bulk of shot, and I can literally just position that little bulk above where them pellets went in, drop it in and what I'm trying to achieve there is a, setting a little trap almost like method feeder kind of presentation that little pile of micros has gone to the bottom and my four mil pellet is going to be sat right on top or right next to them I don't want it a foot away or a foot past it I want it right next to them 
and it's just a case of sitting there holding it as still as you can and waiting for that little dink under hopefully little indication there straight away so there's some fish kicking about proper hint of spring in the air for the first time this morning beautiful now that rig's super stable i'll come on to that a little bit later because having a rig that you can hold nice and still on top of that little pile of feed so so important with this kind of fishing but we'll do a little in-depth look at that shortly another little indicator straight away then fish are on to them micros straight away expected to get bites quick but didn't think we'd be getting a fish look at that first chuck fish first chuck what's that then feels like a proper carp that does doesn't matter if it's freezing cold or mild this time of year, using them to begin with definitely gets fish in your peg. It's almost like they can't help themselves on them. But if I've caught this early, I'm expecting there to be quite a lot of fish there, so I'm probably going to need to change at some point. Like I mentioned, when you're feeding micros, there's a lot of single particles in a pot of feed, so you need to be careful and manage how many are getting sort of eaten by the fish as soon as you start to get a build-up of them on the bottom that's when you start missing bites foul looking fish losing fish and that's when maybe you need to step up to a four mil or even sixes depending on the size of them this looks like a proper little carp look at that beautiful little fish look at these absolutely stunning how how gorgeous the cameraman here is a big carp angler folks and i know that he's looking at that thinking when that's 20 or 30 pound whoa it's going to be absolutely stunning look at that and one thing i'll mention while i've got this fish here can you see the hook hole it's smack in the middle of the top lip and that is a sign that you've got the right amount of bait in your peg when you start hooking fish around the outside of the mouth um, or bumping them and losing them. Generally, that means there's too much of the bait there and they're whizzing about, and that's what you, that's why you get a lot of missed bites and foul looking. But nice clean hook holds in the top lip when you're fishing pellets, definitely a positive. Back out, same again, can't really fail on one first chuck, but I've just got a feeling if we're going to catch that quickly that there's going to be a lot of fish here and we might need to change pretty sharpish to maybe some hard four mils they're perfect them little proper carp i'd call them you know they're not f1s they're not hybrids look at that straight away the proper little stocky carp they love an hard pellet especially these which are pretty new fish they've been fed in a fish farm hard pellets and the nice thing about a four mil compared to just putting that little clump of micros in is you get that bit of noise when they go in so you're constantly bringing a few more fish into the swim and going by this if it's going to be hectic like this we might even get away with pinging a few in with a catapult you know two in two chucks what a place that feisty little things they are Stunners. Again, the speed of them bites just shows how important that accuracy is though. That clump of pellets is coming out of the pot, going straight to the bottom in a little tight area. If you can put that hook bait right on top of them, you're going to get quick bites like that every time, especially when there's a lot of fish kicking about. Another thing you've got to be careful of, obviously, this time of year fishing with micros is some venues have a lot of small fish in them little roach little skimmers that kind of thing and if they are a problem maybe need to be starting on four mils as well but this particular venue mainly proper carp some big skimmers they're not too much of a problem but i mean i don't know if you can see me float i think john's got a camera on it so many little indi 
look at that. Uh, that one looks like it's probably foul looked. I had a lot of indications that chuck. A lot of little light dinks where they were clearly eating the up. There you go. I knew that one was foul looked. And that already, I know we're only three chucks in, that's a sign that we probably want to be changing it up to four millard pellets. I'm going to go straight on them actually now because there's so many fish there. I'm going to keep putting a six mil expander on the hook, a nice big visual, nice big visual soft hook bait. But I'm going to take the little plumping pot that I've got on off and put on a medium with a sprinkle lid. And that way I can just rattle in sort of, I don't know, a dozen or 15 four mil activated pellets. And instead of there being sort of a hundred micros in the swim and them fish whizzing about, which is why I think I were getting them little indications that cast, there's not as much bait for them to eat. The four mil hard pellets will sink a lot faster. And what I just done there is just dunked the pot into the water and that just glazes the pellets and makes sure they break the surface tension straight away. So they'll all go down really, really quickly once I've potted them in. Which when there's a lot of fish kicking about, it's exactly what you want. You don't want them sort of hovering in them upper layers. I'm just going to sprinkle them out of my pot like so. And I reckon this time, after foul looking and losing one and getting them funny indications that time, I'm hoping we'll get a nice clean shoot under and fish on. It'll be the first fish I've caught this year, I reckon, feeding some harder pellets as well. Look at that wallop, perfect. See how much quicker and cleaner that indication is. And that's because them four mils are the heavier, the denser, give them a little dip, they'll shoot down to the bottom, still nice and accurate in a little pile, but I've got my up bait right on top of them and that's probably the first fish that's dashed in and I've got him. This is normally where I lose it now on camera, now I've said that. You could see how much faster and cleaner that bite were. And it's the perfect demonstration of, like I mentioned this morning, how you need to be prepared to sort of change between different sizes and kinds of pellets to make sure you can keep catching. Look at them, they are absolutely gorgeous. You could paint that one, John, couldn't you? Look at him. Look at how cold though, folks. Top lip, really clean, fast bite. Not done this sort of fishing for a while, but really enjoying this. So a couple of things on the accuracy factor. The first area that I myself used to go wrong a lot and see people going wrong is they don't hold the pole on the end of the pole in the right spot time after time. Often people can get lazy and they have a bit of pole behind them, push it forward a little bit. I like to line my pole up with the back edge of my seat box so I know I'm fishing, banging the same spot every time. And when it comes to turning your pole pot over, my pot's about two inches back from the edge of my tip. So I compensate, I lead, lean forward a couple of inch as I rattle the pellets in there, and then I'll lean back and lift that bulk up. And the beauty about having that little bulk of shot that I'll show you shortly is you can see it dead clearly. And I'll just hold that right on top of where them pellets went in. And four mil pellets, they'll probably take about 10 to 15 seconds to reach the bottom in that depth. I'll hold the flow at the water till then and then slowly lower that float right on top of them. So my aim is to have a little pile of four mils on the bottom, just settling down, and then that expander nestled right on top. And then I'm holding that rig dead still for as long as I can. Obviously, there's a lot of fish there at the minute, but holding that rig dead still on top of them with them back shots. And as you can see there, you've got the perfect little trap set. But if you're not super accurate and your rig's drifting away from your pellets or you get a bit lazy and you plop it a little bit past or a little bit too close, of course you're going to catch a few fish. But if you want to take it to the next level and catch the first one that comes in the swim and catch nice and efficiently, then paying that little bit more attention to accuracy is absolutely everything. Don't pick a bad marker. 
I've got a nice little bush on the far bank today. Don't go picking, you know, a massive huge tree or something that's going to move. A nice little marker low to the water on the far bank that you can line up with every time is perfect. I really want to catch a common for the cameraman. But so far I'm failing, aren't I? Look at that one, row of scales right down the middle. And again, let's have a look where he's hooked. I'm saying smack in the middle of the top lip. Look at that. Perfect sign, you've got your feeding right, your rig right, your bin nice and accurate. Another one in the onion sack. Now, I mentioned the rig that time there before um, I upped that particular fish and the rig is all about the accuracy and efficiency factors um, of fishing pellets. I want to be able to put it right on top of that bait. Hook wise, I'm fishing a 6mm expander, so I've got a 14 Super LWG. Big hook, sort of medium gauge, um, but I can bury that in a 6mm so you can't even see it. And I think the big hook's important, so that when you lift, when you get a bite, you definitely nick the fish. Two smaller hook with expanders, you miss a lot of bites. I've got a 6 inch hook length of 013 N gauge on there. And right on top of the up length knot, a number eight shot. The reason for such a big shot there is I want that stability in the rig. I want that expander to go down and I can lower it right on top of that little pile of pellets. And a big heavy dropper shot definitely helps me do that. And then seven inches above that shot, I've got four number eights in a little block and a 13 microcube just to dot the float down. And that little block is what I can lift the rig up once I've potted the pellets in and see on the surface and lower it right on top of them. So I use, I like to use a little bulk wherever possible rather than sort of a spread shot in, just so I can um, see it when I'm positioning the rig. Main line's 017 engage and the floats are 0.4 of a gram bobby and everything about the floats, stability for me. I've mentioned before, I wanna hold that bait, bang on top of them little pile of pellets. I've got a wire stem on it, nice visible, um, tip. My eyes are terrible. Not only got ginger air, ginger air wear glasses as well. Contacts are in today. 0.4 of a gram text, five number eights and a few trimmers. But a long wire stem, really, really stable pattern, essential for pellets. And then this is something else that's a little bit magical about the rig. Back shot. Today, I know it looks calm, but we've got a very nasty, skimmy wind. And that kind of wind is what pushes your float away to the sides or past where your little pile of bait is. And that is when you start missing bites and foul looking them. Because all the fish are eating here and your rig's sort of drifting out past them. By having them back shots, I'm sure that we'll get a nice cutaway to show them in use. But you can hold them just touching the water, the bottom one here, and that will keep the floating position. And the second one, that's a little bit higher up, keeps that line between the pole tip and that bottom back shot nice and straight. So when it does dink under, you straight on top of the fish. And the final white hydroelastic to finish it off, lovely mediocre, can land anything from a three ounce roach up to a 15 pound carp on that. And the last thing is pole pots. Now that's a medium one with a sprinkle lid, but as you can see, it's only two, two and a half inches down from the pole tip. Again, accuracy is everything. I see a lot of people with them six, eight inches away, but I like mine nice and close. And the beauty of these ones is, They've got a really nice, soft, but tight grip, and you can have them right on the tip of your pole, so you're nice and accurate. That's the pellet rig. I'll tell you what we'll do as well. Comment below with your favorite place to go pellet fishing, and we'll pick a winner um, at random out of every comment that we get, and I'll wrap this rig on a winder, give it to John at the end of the day, and we'll give it away to one person. So yeah, get a comment down there. Where's your favorite place to do this kind of fishing? And I'll wrap this rig up, and the winner can have this one. What about that? Of course, gang, when the fishing is good, it's not gonna stay one a chuck all day long. And one thing I've started to do as things have slowed down a little bit today is to just start pinging an odd pellet. And as soon as you feel that lull in the swim, you're missing an odd bite, or it's taking you a little bit longer to actually get a bite, loose feeding a few pellets can be deadly because when you fire pellets in with a catapult, I've just hooked one there. 
when you actually fire them with a catapult, the end to the water completely different to a pole pot. And especially if the swim's starting to wane a little bit and fish are getting used to them pellets just being potted in that tiny area, to keep fish coming, picking up a catty, making a little bit more noise, but more importantly, spreading that baited area out and around can be very, very effective. And one thing I would say, which a lot of people tend not to do, is I always still like to fish with a little pole pot on the end of my pole. And the whole idea of that is I've got the noise and I've got the nice spread of bait from the catapult, but this feels like a little bit bigger one, but I've still got that little hot spot where I can put my rig in a nice neat pile of bait. I reckon this could be one of the old original carp, this one, you know. It's certainly pulling a little bit harder. But like I said, the, the main reason for pick, picking up that catapult is a bit more noise and a different spread of bait. When fish have been nailed on a spot for, I mean, we've been fishing a couple of hours now, they definitely get used to it and they come back off. And that's the point when changing, picking up a catty and creating a little bit of difference in the way that you're feeding can result in catching a few more fish. Lovely fish, aren't they? Look at that. Now, what I'd say about the loose feeding is you've got to be careful not to overcook it. And by that, I mean not just relentlessly firing in pellets all of a sudden. When the bait's landing over a bigger area, the fish will move about a lot more to pick it up. And if there's too many pellets on the bottom over a big area, it'll take you a long time to get a bite. Um, and what I try and do to combat that and to make sure that everything's in my favour is I don't only keep the pole pot on to create a little hot spot but when I'm loose feeding the pellets I consciously try and fire them this side of my flow. I don't like loads and loads of bait going past my pole tip. I kind of like my little pile of feed and my up bait to be the little bit of bait that's about the furthest out. So when I'm loose feeding I'm only pinging three, four, five pellets at a time, but I try and land them this side of my float. Some of them might go a metre this side, and some of them will just tickle onto the float. But that way, I feel like the fish are going to come in from the other side of the rig in all that open water, and the first little bit that they come to is that little pile of feed, Mr. Bite then, and my pellet on the back edge. But today, when things have gone a little bit quieter, Pinging a few pellets has definitely brought us a few more fish. Look at that, it's back solid again now. Absolutely awesome. That noise, more bait falling through the water, and I just think when they wear it, keeping them spread out a little bit more stops them spooking as much. It's something that I do in all kinds of fishing, whether it's ground bait for skimmers, and I know that even big carp anglers for wary fish often fish over a bigger area and it's something that done correctly you can adapt to this style of fishing when they get warier pick up that catty create yourself a bit of a bigger area a little bit more noise and you'll just continue picking fish off oh missed him went for will raise and power scoop you'll just continue picking fish off throughout the session it's another little string to your bow when you're fishing with pellets Look at that one. Great, isn't it? In terms of hook baits, gang, obviously you've got to tailor it to what's happening on the day. Today, a six mil expander by far has been the best, but if it were tougher and I wanted to catch more skimmers, I'd use a four. And if there's a not lot, of, if there's a lot of nuisance fish, that's when I put a banded hook length on and fish with a hard pellet in the band. But these fish today have loved them six mil neutral expanders. It's been a great day to be fair. I haven't done this sort of fishing for a while, these young, chunky little pasty, stocky style carp. And what a great example of how to catch them on pellets. Starting on them micros, switching it up to four mils. I've never actually had to go back to micros today, but if things went really quiet, 
I could try potting a few more micros in there and later on, pinging them pellets in with a cat eh, has just, you know, sent you absolutely crazy again. It's one a chuck again after a little quiet spell. But I just hope that I've sort of showed you that pellet fishing's not just about tapping a few in with a pot and putting your rig in the water. There's lots of little things you can do to get an edge. Think about accuracy, that next level being accurate and trying to put your hook bait right on top of that pile of feed. Think about the size of pellets you're using and then think about how you introduce them to the water. Are you potting them in in a clump? Are you sprinkling them in? Or are you using that catapult to make a little bit of noise in a bigger area? Get out there, enjoy a bit of pellet fishing and catch a few fish and we'll see you next time.